So sometimes you're going to want to save. I built this thing um, using the date object because sometimes I want a file name to automatically be generated. And uh, one of the things about SF Record is that if you write the same file name over again, it's just going to overwrite the old file with the same name. It's not going to warn you or anything. Just going to do it's it. Just going to do it, and sometimes that can be sad. Um, <laughs> so I was thinking, how could you generate a file name that never repeats twice? To, and so you can just use this date object, and it will give you the date and the current date and time. So you can name your file the current date and time, and you're never going to get the same thing twice. So uh, the way the date and time works is, if you send date the date message, it's going to output month, day, year. If you out send it the time message, it will output hour, minute, second. And it does that as these two packed lists. So you unpack these lists. We haven't talked about unpack and pack yet, but we'll get there. So you unpack the date, uh, month, day, year, and you unpack hour, minute, second. And then you basically you unpack them so that you can pack them back together again using this object called sprintf. The reason I'm using sprintf is because I want to use underscores in my file name. And sprintf lets you really flexibly compose messages. And uh, I wanted, so it's this percent %o2d underscore percent %o2d. Anyway, this is a way of packing together. All the numbers that are coming in here are o2, percent %o2ds. And then they're separated by what I put in here, which is an underscore. And you can make that whatever character you want. Um, so it's basically packing all that stuff back together so that you get this uh, this single message out that you can use to uh, uh, name a file. So when I click on date time here, um, it changes down here to 2018, 09, 05, 14, 15, 34. So that means year, month, day, hour, minute, second. And that's in decreasing units, right? So year is bigger than month, month is bigger than day. Um, that's not how it actually comes out of date. It comes out month, day, year but I want to name my file year, month, day. So that's why you see this crisscross here. And that's why we also need this int because uh, once it's all settled, then it spits out this sprintf, which you can then use to uh, name your file. If you wanted to name your file, like um, you could say uh, open, and you could say, call it a, uh, well, you put the word open in there and it still works. And now you can see the message says open, that. Um, oh, you need a .aif on the end, mm -hmm. so you could put a uh, open .aiff. That's why the sprintf is so flexible. It's really, it's really a nice object. So now it's generating this message: open full date down to the second .aiff with no space there. So it's that's one of the features of sprintf. Is it? It's a very low level thing. It does exactly what you tell it to do. Um, okay, that is the date time file name thing. So we're going to use this in further recording systems to automatically. Do you want to just mention why it is it would be useful to have the file name begin with open? Well, yeah, if you send this right into the SF record, it would open the file automatically and name it this uh, current time and date dot AIFF. I'm right. sure we're going to show that, aren't we? Uh, Some variation of that. How did you know? How did you guess? I just, you know, these things come to me. Okay. <laughs>